In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create an app that quizzes you on multiplication facts, and you'll learn how to use procedures in math as well as just get more practice using AppMeter. This is what the final app is going to look like. You'll see two numbers that are randomly generated, and there's a text box for the user to put in what they think the product is. If I put in the correct answer, which is 44, the app tells me I got it right. And now the app gives me a new question, and if I answer it wrong this time, I get a pop-up telling me I got it wrong and what the correct answer was. So go ahead and pull up a project page for App Inventor. If you don't know how to do that, I recommend watching my previous video, Introduction to App Inventor. As usual, we're going to start out with our user interface, designing what our screen is going to look like. And if you remember from the video, we have a few components on there. Uh, we have a few labels, and those are going to represent the numbers that the user is supposed to multiply, as well as the multiplication sign and the equal sign. And we'll need individual labels for all of those. So let's go ahead and drag those over. So this first label um, will be our first number. And so that I can remember that once we're doing the code, I'm going to rename this because currently it's named label1, which isn't very descriptive. So to rename that, I'm going to click this rename button down here and call this number one. And after that, I'm going to want a multiplication sign, which requires another label. And then to change the text in that label, I'm going to go to its properties and scroll down to where it says text and change that to an X for multiplication. I'll need another label for the second number. And again, I'll rename this one number two. And note that even though these are going to eventually have numbers in them, I don't need to set them right now because I want those to be randomly chosen values. And I can't randomly choose values right here in the user interface. That's going to be, have to be something that I do in the code later. So for now, I'm just going to leave it as text for label two. The last label that I'll need is an equal sign. So I'll pull down another label and go under text and change that to an equal sign. All right, and now we're done with labels. Uh, the next thing that we need is a text box because that will allow the user to enter in their guess for the multiplication. And text boxes are down here at the bottom, so I'll drag that over. And I'm just gonna change right now for hint, that's going to be what shows in this kind of gray text. And rather than hint for text box one, I'll change that to your answer. And then the next thing I'm going to need is a submit button. So I will pull down button and change its text to submit. All right, and one more thing I want to change is that the font right now for these is a little bit small. Um, so I'm going to make that bigger and change the font size for 20 for all of these labels. And you can see that's updated in real time on my screen. Now, if you'll remember from the video, we also had these little pop-ups that were coming up um, giving feedback about whether you got an answer or not. And that's actually something else we're going to have to do in the design panel. There's this notifier option under the user interface, and that will allow us to bring up that pop-up. So go ahead and drag that and bring it onto your screen. Again, this is going to go under non-visible components rather than something on the screen because we don't always have the notifier there. It only comes up sometimes, but we have to remember that it's there, and that's why it's under non-visible components. Now that we have our screen, let's get to the coding. I'm going to click on blocks. All right, so we're going to need to have a few variables here. We'll need one variable for each of our two numbers that we're multiplying. And variables are just a way of assigning names to a value so that we can reference them. To create variables, um, there's a special type of blocks for that under here. And just pick the first one, which says initialize global name to. Initialize means create, and global means it can be used anywhere in this program. So we can drag that down. And then um, we'll want one of these for each of our numbers. So I'll call the first number num1. And it doesn't really matter what we started off with because we'll be doing some more complicated code later on to actually assign it a random value. So for right now, we could just make it zero. And then because my code for initializing my second number is going to be very similar, I can actually just hit Command or Control, depending if you're on a Mac or Windows, and then C to copy this code, and then 
Command or Control V to paste it. So that makes things a little bit easier. And I will call this one num2. And I'm actually going to want a third variable as well. And that variable is going to be the correct answer. So it will end up being number 1 multiplied by num2. Right now, though, it's also just going to start off as 0 because it doesn't have a meaningful value yet. So I'll pull down this block and make it answer. So that will be the name of this value. And then I'll just copy and paste this 0 down here. So that will start off as 0. So now um, this will require a little bit of thinking. We have to think about when and at what point we want to create new numbers to put on the screen. Because if you'll remember from the video, every time the user answered the question, it brought up a new set of numbers. We also want those numbers to be refreshed when the user first opens the screen. Because we're going to want to do that code in both places, instead of having to put in the code every time, this is where procedures will come in handy. And if you've done programming before, procedures are equivalent to functions. It's a way of putting all of the code for a process in one spot, and then we can just reference that procedure or call that procedure whenever we want to do that rather than having to put the same code twice. We're going to create a procedure that's going to allow us to establish our numbers. We're going to pick the first one which says to procedure do and I'm going to call the procedure set question. So this will be our process that allows us to reset a question whenever the user first opens the app or answers the previous question. The first thing that we'll want to do is to reset our first two numbers so that they can take on their random values. I'm going to mouse over num1 here and that will bring up set global num12. So that allows us to set the value of our first number. So I will pull that over here and put it under there. And it has this empty puzzle piece here which means we need to put one other value there. So we want global num1 to be a randomly generated number. We can do that using one of the math blocks. So if we go under math here, uh, there's this block that says random integer from 1 to 100. So we can pull that down. Now 100 is kind of a high upper bound. And to be more realistic here, I'm just going to change this to 12. You can change it to whatever number you want, depending on your mathematical capabilities. Um, and I want pretty much the same code for num2. I'm just going to change this drop down here to global num2. All right, so now we've defined our two numbers that we want to multiply. The last thing that we need to change is answer because um, we need answer to be the correct answer for these two numbers. I'm going to get a set answer block. And to make sure we have the right answer, we're going to actually need to multiply these two numbers, num1 and num2. And we could do that with a block under math again. And there's this block right here, which has two little empty pieces and an X in the middle. So that's going to give us whatever we get when we multiply the numbers in these two slots. So I will pull that down. All I need to do now is to put num1 and num2 in there. And again, I can get that by mousing over num1. And instead of getting set global num1, I'll get get global num1, which allows us to get the value instead of setting it. So I'll pull that there and then do the same thing for num2. Now I've defined my variables, but I need to actually update it on the screen because the screen's not going to update it automatically. We need to actually tell it that we've gotten these new values and we want to put those on the screen so the user can see them. So to do that, um, we're going to go under the number one and number two labels. This is where it comes in handy that we rename them because then we'd have to figure out what label one means and label two means. But we know that number one is where num1 is supposed to be stored and number two is where num2 is supposed to be stored. To set those values, uh, if you click on this and scroll down here, it says set number one dot text two. So that allows us to control the text in that label. That's what we want to do, so we're going to pull that over. This is asking us, what do we want to set the text to? Well, we just want the text to be equal to num1 because that's what's going to show up on the screen so the user knows what numbers to multiply. So I'm just going to copy this block here and paste it. And then it's going to be a similar thing for our second block. So I can just copy and paste this block as well and change this to number 2 and change this to num2. Alright, so now we have this procedure. But just defining this procedure by itself doesn't actually do anything. We need to call the procedure 
to do what's stated inside of it. The first case that we're going to want to use this procedure is when we first open the screen because the first time the screen starts we want to make sure we have a question there ready for the user to answer. And there's an easy way for us to do that um, because there's a very handy block specifically for this case. If we go and click under screen 1 on blocks, there's a block that says when screen 1 dot initialize and that means when we open the screen. And that's exactly what we want to do here, so we can click and drag that. Now, instead of having to put all of this code under here, we can just do, accomplish all of that in one line. And that's done by if we click on procedures, there's a block that says call set question. And so if we drag that, what that's going to do is when the screen initializes, it's going to see call set question, so the computer will go, okay, I need to go find set question. And set question is defined over here, so it will jump to this spot in the code and then do all of this. I encourage you now to go ahead and test out this app and see what happens. And what you should see is that now you get this random question every time you open the app, but nothing will happen if you click the submit button. We still need to code that part. So let's do that. We need to give the user feedback when they click that submit button. And because this has to do with an event relating to the button, this is going to be a block under button. So if we click on button 1, the very first one is when button 1 dot click. And that's what we want here because we want to start a chain of events when the user clicks that button. So we can drag that over. Now the first thing that we want to do when the user clicks the button is to figure out whether or not they had the right answer. And we can check if they had the right answer using an if block, and we're going to find that under control. So click on control, and then it's the first one here. And if blocks allow us to run a certain section of code if a certain condition is true. So we check to see if something is true, and if that's the case, then we can do something else. And in this case, what we want to be checking for is if the user entered the right answer. Because if their answer was correct, then we want to tell them so. And if their answer was wrong, we want to tell them something different. So let's pull that one down. So this part right here is asking us for the condition, the thing that we have to check and see whether it's true or false. And what we want to check here is if the user answered the correct answer. And we can do that by comparing what their answer was to what our answer variable is. And if they're equal, then their answer was correct. If it's not equal, then their answer was wrong. To compare those two values, we'll want to use equals, and we can get that block under math. The second one here allows us to check for equality. So we can pull that one down. And just like with multiplication, it allowed us two spots to put two numbers in. This one does as well. And our two numbers here are going to be our answer variable and what the user put in for text. So to get our answer variable, we just mouse over that and choose get global answer. And then the second one is going to be whatever they put in the text box. And we can get that by clicking on text box one and scrolling down to text box one dot text. Now that we have that, what's gonna happen is that any code in this spot is going to be run only if this is true. So what do we want to happen if they had the correct answer? Well, we want to bring up that pop-up window that tells them that they had the right answer. So we can do that under Notifier 1. Notifier 1 was that non-visible component that we had added to our screen for pop-ups. So we can choose that. Um, there are a few different options here for different kinds of pop-ups. This is about halfway down. Um, and the only real difference is do we want different kinds of buttons? Do we want a message? Do we want a button at all? And in this case, we do want a button because we want the user to be able to click get next question. Um, so we're going to choose show message dialog because this allows us to have a button text. So pull that one down. And it takes three things here. It takes a message, a title, which is the title of the pop-up window, and button text, which is the text that's on the button. So to set those texts, we'll need to get text blocks from over here, and text is the first one with the quotes. So my message is just going to be, you got it. And then my title, I can just copy and paste this block, is going to be, yay. And then button text will be next question. All right, 
So we've covered the case that they got the answer right, but what if they get the answer wrong? We want to tell them something there too. This is where else comes in handy. Else is a way of considering all of the cases when what we were checking for with the if statement isn't true. And in that case, that's going to be whatever their answer was not the same as the correct answer, meaning they got the question wrong. And the way we can add an else statement is clicking on this little settings icon and dragging this else. Make sure you get the else and not the else if. So now we have this section for else. And again, like the if, it has a spot here for us to put code. And that code will only happen if the if statement part is not true. So it's going to be very similar to our code here, so I'm just going to copy and paste this. But then, of course, we'll want to change the text that's in here because we no longer want to tell them they got it. If they got it wrong, we'll tell them incorrect. But we also want to tell them what the correct answer was because it's not very satisfying to just know you got it wrong. So how do we tell them what the answer was? Well, then we'll need to call our global answer again. But this might seem like a little bit of a problem because message only allows us a space for one puzzle piece. But if we go under text, there's a block that's called join, and that allows us to join different pieces of text. And because it has this one little thing that's sticking out there, we can put that into message. So if we pull that down and stick it there, we can put this piece of text as our first one, and I'm just gonna finish this off and say the answer was, and now in the second one, that's going to be the second piece of text that we're joining. And that's just going to be our answer. So I will bring the get global answer and put it there. So now it's going to be combining the text that says incorrect the answer was and what the actual answer is and showing that as its message. And I'm also going to change the title to all, but I'll keep the button text the same. Next question. Now the last thing that we need to code here is to create a new question after they answer each question because we're calling our set question method when we initialize the screen, but we also need to reset the question after the user answers it because they want another question, the user doesn't want to answer the same question over and over. So we can use the same block of code, call set question, so I'll copy and paste this. And then uh, we can just drag it down after the if statement. Because what's going to happen as the computer is going through this code is it's going to be checking this condition and then it will either do this block of code or it will do this block of code. But regardless, it's going to get back down to this section under here because this is after the if then else statement and it's going to call set question. And again, because set question is a procedure, um, it's going to look back up where we defined our procedure and go through these steps. So num1 will be set to a new random integer between 1 and 12. Num2 will as well. We'll reset our answer to the correct product of those two numbers, and then we will update our text. So go ahead and run this and test it out, and I hope you learned something about procedures and math in App Inventor.